back to weekly business podcast Baruhi. So today I'm joined by Casey Adams. So hi Casey, would you be able to kind of briefly explain to the audience who you are and what you do? Yeah, thank you so much for having me on today. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, so who I am. So my name is Casey Adams and I'm an entrepreneur, podcast host. And, you know, as of recently, I- I'm going through this very interesting uh, transition. So I'm a startup founder. I have a company called Media Kits and we actually recently got acquired just about four weeks ago. We announced it. So now um, I'm currently working inside of this company called Viral Nation, continuing to build media kits. And for those that may not know what media kits is, we built the easiest platform for creators to create a media kit with real-time data and analytics. And we launched at the tail end of 2021. But prior to that, and really how I got into the whole world of business and entrepreneurship was um, I was 16 years old. I was a sophomore in high school. And I ended up getting injured playing football, which landed me in a neck brace for just over six months. And then during this six month period of my life, I really, you know, I was depressed. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I could never play football again. And that slowly but surely led me down this rabbit hole of personal development and business and marketing and entrepreneurship. Then that that led me to starting to build a personal brand and learning Facebook advertising to then launching a podcast in 2017, which I've now hosted for the past five years. Um, But, you know, looking back, all the the dots make sense and they connect. But, you know, how this all journey started was in in a position where I was depressed in a neck brace and really not sure what I wanted to do with my life. But over the last five, five plus years, it's been an exciting journey. Yeah, that's amazing. And I think you have a great trajectory of kind of like a multifaceted trajectory. So I wanted to kind of touch on Media Kids. So what's next after the acquisition of Media Kids by Viral Nation? Yeah, you know, as a founder, it's for me, it's really important that not only does the product continue to thrive within the Viral Viral Nation ecosystem, but we have a lot of really ambitious uh, goals along our uh, trajectory in terms of KPIs we want to hit, new product offerings we want to launch, different features that are uh, super exciting. So as a founder that's now inside this new, uh, you know, conglomerate of an entity, Viral Nation, who's incredible, we're just continuing down our product roadmap and focusing on not only getting new users in the door, but again, like I said previously, launching some super cool features coming out soon that they I can't talk too much about, but uh, we are definitely super excited to just really scale the media kids product with the viral nation ecosystem. You know, they, they represent just over 500 plus talent exclusively. They have an incredible uh, organization that is just really in hyper growth mode right now. So it's super excited to be in there. And uh, again, just to continue building media kids in there. Yeah, that all sounds very exciting. So I wanted to understand from you. So you, you had put out a tweet and in your tweet, you'd mentioned how did you, went about raising VC money from your podcast guests. So that was a tweet that you'd put out. So I wanted to understand from you, any advice you can share for founders who are currently trying to raise um, and how they can go about raising around from VCs and what's your take on the VC landscape? Yeah. So, you know, when I, when we first raised money from media kits, that was my first time raising capital uh, for a startup. And, you know, we raised just over $1.5 million in a pre-seed family friends round at the beginning, mid 2021. And really prior to that, and what I've always thought about as a founder and entrepreneur is, you know, your network is your net worth. And, you know, it's a very cliche thing to hear and say, but the only reason that I was able, and we, as Kieran and myself, my, my business partner and our team were able to raise capital our, was from our pre-existing relationships, right? And for me, the, the majority of the fundraise came from uh, the pod, previous podcast guests that I've had on my show since I was 17 years old. And for people that may not know, my podcast, uh, The Casey Adams Show, I've had it for just under five years and I've done over 400 interviews with incredible founders ranging from um, the founder of Twitch, Justin Khan, to the founder of Netflix, Mark Randolph, to Elon Musk's mom and sister, to the legendary broadcast host, Larry King, and all of these incredible people in between. 
And really through that journey, I've been able to meet a lot of incredible people. So when we were fundraising, it wasn't just, hey, how can I go raise money? But it was instead thinking, hey, I have some incredibly valuable people in my network. I want to go pitch you know, a, a handful of people that I believe would truly not only bring value to what we're building, but understand it and be able to give us quality feedback. So that's exactly what we did. You know, we set up dozens and dozens of meetings within a very short period of time and just started pitching. And luckily and thankfully, like I said, I did not have any experience with actually fundraising, but I had some incredible mentors, one of them being uh, a mentor, his name is Aristotle Loomis. He really helped throughout the entire journey of the fundraising process. And I think as a founder, having someone like that, that is truly in your corner, that's picking up the phone whenever you call them, that's been through it before, right? Like it's one thing to just say, hey, like go find mentors, but having a mentor that is with you through the hard times and can really coach you to the point where not only you can go do it by yourself, but they help you understand the process was very impactful for us, especially myself when as someone that was and still is young founder and experiencing this whole world of venture capital and fundraising. So I guess if I had to really take a step back and say, here's my three biggest pieces of advice for founders raising capital, especially if it's your first time is number one, really nail down your story of what you're building, right? Like every product, every company, you're, you're selling a story, right? You're selling why you, why now, and just why in the market, right? You're, especially when building in tech, you have to really know why you're doing it. And again, why you're the best operator for that role. And you have to tell a story that's very impactful when you're pitching. Number two is, uh, for me, it, it came easier because of the podcast, but have a network and pitch people that, can not only give you true feedback, but want to see you win, right? Like sometimes pitching a bunch of people that are, uh, that you don't know, that you just met from a cold email. Yes, that's great. But if you can get your first 10, 15, 25 call or pitch meetings with people that can give you real feedback that you're, you you know, been acquainted with for a while, um, that's going to be extremely valuable. And I think it's going to help you hone in on your story and uh, really get you to a point where you have the confidence needed and the the skill set with the uh, feedback to go pitch with confidence. And then number three is simply one word: consistency. Uh, like for us, when we started raising capital, it, it it was it took us six months. And you know, for any capital raise, sometimes it's shorter, sometimes it's longer. But it was a game of pure consistency, getting no's, getting rejections, but just truthfully powering through with the you know the light at the end of the tunnel at, at the end of the tunnel with hey, we're going to find partners that believe in this, that want to be a part of this, but it's just a matter of time. And most importantly, it's a matter of being consistent with outreach, with pitching, with follow-ups and everything that goes within the fundraising process. So those are really my, my, at a high level, top three things that I would recommend and feedback. But, you know, I I think taking that, and if you're in a position where you're about to go fundraise, like you just have to get after it. Like there's never going to be a perfect time, especially in this, in this market, right? Like things are very unpredictable. There's the fundraising environment is drying up in a lot of certain uh, areas. So no matter what is happening, like utilize the confidence in the story to pitch yourself and, and go get that feedback as soon as you can. Yeah, I really loved your point on how to how to have a network and pitch to people who want to see you win. So how do you find these people that want to see you win? How do you kind of find your mentors in the space? And how do you start out without, if you have no network, how do you kind of network your way up? Yeah. So when it comes to building a network, I think it's not, it's different for everyone. And for me, you know, I have... I have a lot of understanding of people where it's like, hey, if you have no network, this is how you start. So for me... I'm from a very small town in Virginia, Chesterfield, Virginia. And growing up, I really didn't know anyone in the, in the business world, in the marketing space, startups, Silicon Valley, et cetera. And for me, that was what I initially wanted more than anything, especially when I was just getting started. I wanted to be able to meet incredible founders, have conversations where I can learn from people that have done it before. And most importantly, like build that network of people that want to see me win and want to be a part of my journey. And eventually it led to me starting a podcast. But even prior to that, I remember being in high school, you know, sophomore, junior, senior year, and 
a big a big part of why I am where I am today is because I was going to a lot of networking events. When I was 16, the first networking event I went to was a real estate conference in downtown Richmond in Richmond, Virginia. And I was the youngest person in the room. There's probably 500 people there. And I was just there getting immersed in, uh, in, in learning new knowledge, new skills, and just meeting people that were a in my, in my hometown area. And then that led to, um, going to an event in San Diego, California at the, beginning of 2017, I got invited to speak at an event uh, through my buddy, Caleb Maddox, who was a speaker, author, entrepreneur at the time. And he invited me to this event in San Diego. And remind you, I was a junior in high school. I've never been to California before in my life. And an opportunity presented itself to me to say, hey, come speak on this stage. I had no reason to go out there. I've never been to California. My parents did not want me to go out there. Um, cause it just was a, you know, very limiting belief. Like, Hey, like you're not going to go to California to speak on this event. Like, no, you're not doing that. But for me, like going out there and, and meeting people, um, really helped move the needle for me because it compounded over time. And that led for me going to this one event to then meeting a lot of awesome people that were hosting different events, some about marketing, some about social media, some are just general networking party type of things. And I remember I skipped like 60 days of school, junior, senior year, going out to California and, and here in LA, going to New York or Miami, going to these networking events and meeting tons of people and then doing podcasts with them. And over the you know two, three, now four or five year period, I've grown an incredible network of people in so many different cities and different industries that the dividends have paid off. It just barely when it comes to the opportunity to raise capital to be in certain rooms and to meet certain people but it all started off just with that drive and ambition and emphasis on building a world-class network and it's not going to happen overnight and and for me and you know to end on this note for the question finding a vehicle to connect you with people in a deeper way is highly underrated right like for me having a podcast and, and yourself doing this podcast with different entrepreneurs, it's a gateway to have phenomenal conversations with people that you are interested in and people that you want to learn from or, or just get connected with in general. So for me, and what I tell a lot of people from 2017 to now, I'll still say like starting a podcast, specifically an interview show is such a growth hack to building a network. And most importantly, it A, you can learn something from people you interview, B, you get to build a great network. And thirdly is build content and build a personal brand and, and utilize it for your own, you know, in your own way. So starting a podcast, I believe is going to continue to get better and better, especially as more people are, are seeing that. So that's sort of my, my advice for, for networking. Yeah, I think you perfectly summed up the benefits of networking and also the benefits of starting a podcast. So now I wanted to kind of segue into podcasting. So You've got some amazing people on your show and I wanted to kind of get your take and I'm curious to hear how did you attract such high quality guests onto your podcast and is there anything you can share to any newbie podcasters out there? Yeah, you know, I, th I think the biggest thing is it didn't start that way, right? Like when it comes to getting big guests on the show, like big names that everyone knows, the Rick Rosses, the Larry Kings, whomever it may be. It didn't start that way. Like my podcast started in my bedroom with a, a pair of Apple headphones and me walking in circles, making an introduction saying, Hey, welcome to, uh, welcome to my podcast. I want to interview entrepreneurs and founders. And I made like a quick two minute intro and posted it right away. And I got the momentum going, but re what really changed or how I was able to go from just in my bedroom in Virginia with no relationships to then having this podcast and interviewing lots of great people were just never be afraid to reach out, never be afraid to not only reach out, but follow up to, um, to go out there and ask, right. You never, you're never going to get anything unless you ask for it in a, in a polite way, in a unique way, whatever it may be. So for me, I initially set a goal for my, <laughs> for my podcast to do 60 interviews in 90 days. And it was, very exhilarating because having never done interviews before, I had to go through that process of learning how to interview people, my interview style, what I wanted to talk about, how I ask questions. And it was just this 
huge uh, growth curve that I had to ride in order to sharpen my skills. So the first 20, 30 people were just people that I already met at events or people that I was following on social media that I've had conversations with briefly on Instagram DMs that getting them to say yes, it was easier versus someone that I've never met before. So that's step one is just like interview people around you that you've spoken to and start there if you're just getting started. And then secondly, as I said previously, don't be afraid to ask. For me, still to this day, the majority of people I've had on my podcast have come from social media DMs, mainly Instagram, Twitter, uh, sometimes LinkedIn, but positioning yourself in a way where you can have a base of interviews of people that you've already met to then go and reach out to people to say, hey, I have a show. I've done X, Y, Z type of interviews. Would love to have you on. And then figuring out that unique third door uh, for them to say yes is the big opportunity that I think comes with time and consistency. But, you know, it's really up to why you want to do it. For me, like I had such a deep desire and passion to go interview people and it continues to grow up until today, uh, not only to get bigger names or, or bigger people on the show, <clears throat> on the show, but just to the curiosity to go learn something, right? Like I think that will innately bring you closer to having bigger people on the show. If you're genuinely passionate about what you do, but most importantly, don't be afraid to ask. Yeah, I think you made an awesome point at the end of don't being afraid to ask. So my next question to you is, so how do you actually go about preparing for your interviews? And is there any process you can share with the audience? Yes, so my process has changed over time. <clears throat> and I think, you know, for everyone listening, your process is not going to be my process. My process is going to be your process. Your process isn't going to be Larry King's process, right? Like we're all going to end up finding our own process. And that's perfectly fine. And I think that's the beauty of it. But for me specifically, you know, again, it's changed over time. But nowadays, I like going into an interview without having um, questions written down or in front of me, but placing more emphasis on listening and being curious about the guest and having a conversation just very organically. And, you know, that does come with researching about the person, watching previous interviews, jotting down ideas about what I want to talk about. But in terms of like the actual day of interview with someone, I just sit down, the mic starts recording, and I just start talking and having a conversation in a very organic way that is natural to me, right? I, I want my interviews to feel like I'm just at a coffee shop with someone getting to know them for the first time and diving into their background and what they're working on and their struggles and their challenges and what's exciting to them and all these different things that relate to, in my eyes, a great conversation. Um, but again, it's changed over time and everyone has their own interview style. So I think if you're, if you're just getting started and launching a podcast and interviewing people, test things, do an interview where you have 50 questions written down, do an interview where you have no questions written down and you just start going off of, you know, your curiosity and let the questions come to you and just figure out what makes you most comfortable and then do that. Um, but even for me, like, I'm always open to change. And one of the reasons why I've stuck with this interview style for a while is because Larry King, who I interviewed um, just like a year before he passed away, he has this quote, very famous quote. He says, I've never learned anything while I was talking. So for me, putting more emphasis on listening, like Larry King always talked about, uh, has been my approach. And I think it's something that everyone can utilize, whether that's in the podcasting format or in just everyday life, is just emphasize listening. And you'd be surprised about the conversations that you can have, whether that's with your family members on a podcast, with someone that you just meet, um, like be genuinely interested in them. And the, the, the fruitful conversations will come from that. Yeah, I think that's some great advice for the audience. So my last question for you is, how do you connect and build relationships with these influencers and the people who come onto your podcast? Like, how do you kind of network with them? And how do you build a relationship that's everlasting? Yeah, you know, I, I think building relationships, um, it's one of, it's two things that are very important. Number one is, you're building them, which means 
if you're building anything, you have to keep putting in the work. You have to keep putting focus on it. You have to keep building it, right? Like if you're building a house, you're building a building, like it takes a lot of effort and you got to put a lot of things in the right way to to make it have a, a great structure or to like be strong. So for building relationships, you know, you can't just meet someone once and say, oh yeah, like, we're, we're connected. We're going to have a great relationship. No, building relationships means showing up to an event that they invite you to. Building relationships means getting back to someone's text message or picking up their phone call whenever they call you. Building relationships means sending them, you know, a, a green juice when they're sick just because you know that and they post on Instagram that they're not feeling good and you just want to show up for them and and make them know that you care and that you're there for them. And I think that the little things in any relationship are the big things, right? Like everyone in this world of business and entrepreneurship, like you meet a lot of people, but what separates someone that you newly meet, that you trust, that you want to build with that is interesting. And it, it's many things, right? Like being an interesting person that has interesting hobbies and, you know, an interesting background or, or, or is doing something new, maybe they're just getting started, but it's interesting and they're hustling and they're doing their thing. Um, so many variables come into play as to you know, how and when to build the right relationships. But I can say firsthand for me, um, you know, I'll, I'll give an example. So Aristotle, who I've mentioned earlier, he's a mentor of mine, coach, he's like a brother figure. And I met him in 2020. Um, I had him on my podcast after I interviewed Stephen Galanis, the CEO of Cameo. And then I ended up meeting Aristotle. And then I ended up having Aristotle on my podcast. And then after that interview, it was just such a natural, uh, a natural relationship where like, we haven't gone a week or a couple of days without talking since then in terms of the consistency of back and forth. And it all happened so naturally because I was just, I was just starting a company. Uh, he is an incredible founder that has raised money and has built many awesome companies, Philo, Tyson 2.0, uh, Ellis and I wear all these great things. And it just organically became this coach slash player mentality of I was asking him so many questions. He was reciprocal and always answering. And I think that that simple behavior of, you know, if you can text someone, they text you back and you can maintain that level of friendship first, but also ability to want to help them in whatever way possible. Um, that's what builds good relationships, but it comes with time. It comes with effort and it's not going to happen overnight. And most importantly, timing right there's so many people in my life where maybe we weren't that close a while ago or maybe we're not close now but i know we'll probably be closer in a couple of years due to what i'm focused on what i'm building how that i can how i can help them vice versa so i, I think just you know put in the effort put in the time and show up when people uh present an opportunity to you to show up yeah those are some great ending points and now uh, I just remembered my actual last question to you. Is, so what is your advice for 20 year olds and people who want to explore new things and start something new? Yeah, my, my advice to 20 year olds or anyone that's in this, you know, in this new world, if they're 20, 21, 18, 17, whatever it may be, my biggest piece of advice that I'd want to tell myself even a couple years ago is again, just get started. I believe that a huge reason why I am where I am is the simple thought of, I just got started, right? I was 16, 17 years old. I had no background in business. I had no relationships. I had no, uh, you know, no reason for it to work besides my work ethic and my, my passion for wanting to succeed and, and do more and be more in this world. And for me at 16 in a small town of Virginia with no relationships and growing up in a very hu in humble beginnings, I just got started. I, I never let uh, opportunities come without me taking action in some way, shape or form, because that's the reality. If you're 2021, 20, you know, there's going to be a lot of opportunities that come your way and you have to learn by trial and error what to say yes to and what to say no to and, and spend your time wisely um, with how you want to progress. But I think, again, number one is just get started, whatever it is, whether that's starting a podcast, starting a business, you know, getting that new job and then actually applying for it. Don't 
let yourself get, uh, like don't procrastinate when, you know, this, this age and time frame of 18 to 25, I think is so special where you can learn new things, meet new people, experience incredible things that you might not get to experience later in life um, in terms of that youthful energy. So yeah, just get started. And one thing that I write in my journal every day is simply keep going because no matter where you are along your journey, we've all had moments where, you know, we might feel we reached, you know, the, the destination, whether that's graduating college, whether that's getting your first job, whether that's starting your business, whether that's like for me, selling your business, whether that's starting a podcast or getting that dream guest on your show. Um, as soon as you get there, you quickly realize in however big or small that may be like, wow, it's just going to keep on going. And for me, like emphasize and keep going and keep pushing has always been powerful and impactful to me because the true value of this, this life and journey we're all on is the journey and not the destination of itself. And I think that over time that has uh, become more and more important to me. And again, I know that's cliche to hear and we, we, some of us may or may not have heard that before, but there's so much value in the love of the pursuit that I think is increasingly becoming more and more important to me. And I think that's what I'd want to hear when I'm, uh, you know, 19, 20 years old again. Wow, that was some really powerful advice and really great message that you've shared with the audience and the 20 year olds out there. So really appreciate you coming on the podcast. And uh, yeah, you've always been my dream guest on the show. So I'm really excited, Thank you excited so much. to have you on the show today. Thank you so much. It was such a pleasure. You were incredible. And it, it's been so awesome chatting with you. Yeah, same here. It was awesome chatting with you. And great to know that you're also familiar with the DC area as well. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. Well, awesome. Perfect. Are we all done in terms yeah, of recording? We're done. Sweet. You were so great. This was so much fun. Yeah, this was a ton of fun. I had a really fun time recording this with you. And you, sometimes like what's happened is when I've interviewed some people that I've admired a lot, I get really nervous. And I guess this time it didn't happen. It just conversation just flowed naturally. Yeah, no, you were you were awesome. Supernatural. Um, and yeah, it, it was great. And I know we've been trying to, to do this for a while. And I'm so glad that we made it happen today. And Please do let me know whenever it comes out. I, I'm happy to share it and, you know, retweet some things, whatever, whatever you end up doing. I'm here to support in any way because I've been there, right? Like I've had, I can't tell you how many times I've been so nervous still to this day, right? Like any guest, if you're like, oh my gosh, I, I want to have them on the show. It's, it's a fun, it's a fun time. And that feeling that you get before or after is, you know, why I love it so much. So I, I totally get it. Yeah, uh, sorry to keep you going. You must have a lot of other commitments going on right now. So I guess we'll end it here. Yeah, well, thank you so much. Please let me know when this comes out and we'll be in touch. Yeah, let's stay in touch. Awesome. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye. Yep, same.